Let's say that you are looking for a telescope that can do it all visual observations, astrophotography, and be light and compact enough for easy transportation, all while being relatively affordable. If you're thinking right now, well, such a telescope doesn't really exist, a couple of months ago, I would have totally agreed with you. Now I'm not so sure anymore, and this might have to do something with the SV503-102 ED refractor from Sviboni. Let me tell you all about it. I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. In my last video I talked about the 102mm Skymax Maxutov Cassegrain telescope from Skywater and about my plan to upgrade it. The reason for the upgrade being that over the last couple of years I slowly arrived at the conclusion that a refractor might offer me better results for visual observations and more options in terms of future astrophotography applications. If you haven't seen that video, I encourage you to check that one out as well. Alright, so when I first seriously thought about upgrading my Mac, I envisioned a telescope that can do the following points very well. Offer excellent optical performance for visual applications, especially for planetary observations. Offer decent astrophotography performance be lightweight and compact enough so that I can take it easily with me when I travel. And fourth, since my budget was 750 euros, roughly 800 US dollars, it needed to be relatively affordable as well. Fast forward a couple of months and I finally settled on the SV503 102mm ED refractor from Sviboni. In fact, the SV503 lineup includes three models with different apertures, 70, 80 and 102 mm. And all three options offer the same promising basics, a quality SFPL 51 objective element, an all aluminum body and a very precise rack and pinion focuser with a 10 to 1 reducer. Which is why I briefly considered the 80 mm version thinking first that the smaller form factor would be a big plus point. But after some more considerations, I arrived at the conclusion that the smaller aperture might cripple visual performance too much for my liking and finally settled on the 102 mm version. Besides the 4 inch aperture, the SV503 features a 714 mm focal length making it an f7 refractor. Its objective lens is made out of two elements in a crown and flint configuration. The first or outside element is made out of quality SFPL 51 low dispersion glass. The glass element on the inside is made out of lanthanide glass sporting a different refraction index to better correct the light refracted by the first element. Combined, these two lens elements should allow for sharp and aberration-free views. To reduce unwanted reflections and improve contrast levels even further, all lens elements are also fully multi-coated. The resulting optical system is able to deliver a very respectable maximum resolution of 1.17 arc seconds and a light gathering capacity of 212 times that of the human eye while the magnitude limit for observing faint objects is 12.1. Size-wise, in its most compact configuration, so meaning without any accessories and a fully collapsed dew shield, the OTA is 63.5 cm long, 12.6 cm wide and 5.5 kg heavy, making it a compact telescope that is very easy to handle and transport around. The objective sits inside an optical tube made entirely out of aluminum alloy. Surrounding the front of the optical tube is a collapsible dew shield also made out of aluminum, which slides in and out on foam pads applied to the OTA. This prevents scratching and ensures a smooth movement. 
While the dual shield is relatively nice and tight, it lacks the means to lock it in place. This means that once in a while when I put on or take off the dust cap, which by the way is also made out of aluminum, I incidentally end up moving the dual shield as well. This can sometimes be a bit annoying. Securing the OTA in place is possible thanks to two solid ring clamps that are made out of aluminum and feature padding on the inside to avoid scratches and a bunch of quarter inch mounting holes for attaching all sorts of accessories. The two ring clamps are connected via a 200 mm long dovetail bar, which also features a few mounting holes for increased mounting flexibility. Moving towards the back of the OTA, we arrive at the 2 inch focuser, which is of a rack and pinion design and features angled teeth for increased accuracy and a 10 to 1 reducer gear for fine focusing. The focuser is attached to the optical tube by a freely spinning ring that allows the whole focuser assembly to be rotated 360 degrees in a smooth and stepless way. This will accommodate any observing position. The focuser's draw tube is painted black and can be extended up to a generous 90 mm. It also features millimeter markings on the side for an easy setup. Sviboni delivers a 2 inch and a 1 and a quarter inch adapter with a telescope, both featuring metal ring clamps for securing eyepieces and other accessories in place. As you guessed by now, the build quality is top notch. Every single part of the OTA is either made out of metal or glass. There is no rattling, no flexing, everything feels tight and well put together. A small little detail that I like is the way the OTA is painted. The matte white has a nice texture to it, this makes it resistant to fingerprints and scratches. I also like the whole focuser assembly, which I found to be very smooth in its movements and also offering a good amount of resistance. All this gives the whole telescope a premium feel. Past a certain size and weight, a simple handlebar makes grabbing the OTA considerably easier and safer. Problem is that Sviboni doesn't include the one with the telescope, so you'll have to buy one separately. For the SV503 I ended up purchasing one from TS Optics, but Sviboni recently also started selling a matching handlebar as well. I leave links to both of them in the description below if you're interested. Alright, so on paper the SV503 is shaping up to be very promising. But how good is the optical performance when taken outside? Well, I've been observing with this telescope for the past couple of months, mainly from my backyard under Bortle 4 skies. The eyepieces I've been observing with were the 24mm pan optic and the 9mm D-Light both from Teleview, the 6.5mm Bader Morpheus and the SV215 zoom eyepiece from Sviboni. In terms of accessories, I've mostly been using the one and a quarter inch prism diagonal from Bader Planetarium, but to get a more complete picture about this telescope's optical performance, I've also tried it out in combination with the SV188P dielectric mirror from Sviboni. As a tripod, I used my trusty AZ Pronto mount from Skywatcher, as I believe it's a great fit for visual observations. I was very excited to finally test this telescope, mainly because I invested my own money in getting it and also because I bought it more or less in good faith without so much as a quick look through it to see how it would perform. But now that I had time to thoroughly test it, I can say that the SV503 surprised me with some amazing views of the night sky. These are brighter than I would have expected from a telescope with a 4 inch aperture size, mainly because I have a lot of experience with reflector telescopes which all feature a secondary mirror or reflective surface inside the OTA. At the end of the day, this is a central obstruction, one that a refractor like the SV503 doesn't have. Here the light can travel unhindered inside the optical tube and this shows 
This combined with the very good contrast levels delivered by the objective allowed me for example to easily spot the Cassini division, Titan and even Rhea while observing Saturn. On Jupiter, the great red spot was also clearly visible, past 130 times magnification. This was certainly due to the good seeing conditions that night, but the SV-503 undoubtedly did an excellent job in capturing every bit of light information reaching its objective. What I like the most about this telescope's optical capabilities is how sharp the views are and how little chromatic aberrations are present at any given time. Stars appear as pinpoints of light even around the very edge of the field of view, and while observing planets, these would appear as very well-defined objects against the black of space. When observing very bright targets like Venus or the Moon, the chromatic aberrations produced by the objective were completely negligible, and only visible when I was really looking for it. I've gotten the best results with respect to aberrations when pairing the SV503 with the Bader prism diagonal and the 9mm D-Light from Teleview. The resulting views were very crisp, clean and without any false color or haloing. What I found to be very interesting is that I was able to push the SV-543 past its maximum theoretical magnification without losing too much image quality. When paired with the SV-215 set to 3mm, the resulting magnification was 338x, which is well beyond the 204 times theoretical limit. The loss in image quality, while noticeable, wasn't nearly as dramatic as I expected it to be, which encouraged me to keep observing at this magnification for longer periods of time. Since I've gotten this telescope as a successor to my 4-inch Skywatcher SkyMax, I was especially curious how the SV503 will stack up against the Mac. The long focal length of the Mac made planetary observations with eyepieces like the 9mm D-Light very easy, and this was really great. By comparison, the SV-503 needs either a bellow or much shorter focal length eyepieces to achieve the same magnifications. A short focal length also puts more strain on the eyepiece, which is why the quality of the eyepiece becomes very important here. While this is definitely a constraint, the SV-503 more than makes up for it with a better image quality across all magnification levels when compared to the SkyMax, especially going past 170x. If the eyepiece is up to the task, the views delivered by the SV-503 are both sharper and brighter. Contrast levels are about the same, but here the Mac was already very good to begin with. In terms of build quality, there is really no contest. The SV-543 is made out of better quality materials, is better put together and feels a lot more premium than the SkyMax, which really is no surprise as it also costs twice as much. So even if the SV-543 is in a different price category, I still think it's worth getting it over the SkyMax. Compared to the 90mm EVO star from Skywatcher, I can say that both telescopes are comparable in terms of sharpness and contrast, with the SV-543 being able to deliver views that are brighter and cleaner in terms of optical aberrations. Regarding build quality, it's a similar story as with the SkyMax. The SV-543 is better put together and feels a lot more premium when compared to the 90mm EVO star. The focuser assembly alone makes the SV-543 worth considering over the EVO star. So yeah, two achromatic refractors with very good optics but in completely different leagues when it comes to build quality and materials used in assembly them. Which is why I chose the SV-543 over the EVO star. As you have noticed by now, I've become a big fan of the SV-543, and that's not just because I have spent my own money on it, but because I really believe this telescope is a really good refractor, especially when considering that it is relatively affordable and compact enough to be taken anywhere without a problem.
I do believe that it has the potential of being an excellent foundation for any astronomy setup, regardless if it is meant for visual observations or astrophotography. Which is why I decided that in the coming weeks and months I will be using the SV-503 to dip my toes in the world of astrophotography by starting with planetary imaging. Now, aside from a few pictures taken years ago, I'm new at this and I don't know where this road will lead, but I'm very excited about taking my first real steps in this direction. I'm also very happy to share this experience with you guys as well. I will try to upload new astrophotography content regularly from now on. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'm also looking for your feedback on this matter, so please do let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think about the SV-543 refractor telescope. Would you get one? Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.